This is one of Notion's most underrated features that I literally haven't seen a single video post or anything about. I've played around with it a bit and if you don't use it correctly then you probably won't find it useful. Now you've probably heard of Notion AI at this point and you might have seen the Notion Agent update. This feature is kind of like the mix of the two. It's called Notion AI Blocks and in this video I'll go through how to use it. I'll show you how to properly use the summary feature then I'll show you the context feature, which is the really useful one. And then at the end, I'll show you how to integrate this into your daily life by creating a prompt hub. By the way, if you have any cool ideas for this, then drop it in the comments for everyone else. Subscribe for Notion tutorials. Let's dive in. Now to access Notion agents, you click down here in the corner on Notion AI. So it's not this, and you've probably seen Notion AI. And just by doing a space bar, you can access Notion AI here. It is not this either. So to access AI blocks, what you'll do is forward slash and then here you can see AI block, it says new here, or obviously you can type slash AI and here you can see AI meeting notes and AI block. So I'll click here on AI block. So AI blocks have a few features. So you can do custom outputs, which we'll be using today, but you can also do page summaries and key points. So down here we have using, so this is where it gets interesting. What you can do when describing what should be made is use information from a specific page. So you can give it context to work with, kind of like Notion agents, how they have the prompt page. But for this, you can basically just say, here's like a page that you can pick up information from. Now, before we jump into custom outputs, let's just have a look at page summaries because these here are actually quite useful. So if I scroll down here, look at this. I have this photosynthesis page here. Now I am not smart enough to understand any of this stuff. This is too much for my brain. So what I'm going to do here is just forward slash AI, click on AI block. And what it will do is summarize this page. So unlike this custom output option where you get to select other pages, this here is simply summarizing the page. So when I click on generate, it will automatically summarize everything that's on the page for me. So this here will be much easier for me to digest than all of this because this is this is too much. This page summary here can be useful if you maybe store videos in your resources hub in Notion and you have those videos transcripts in there. You can then summarize that at the bottom of the page. By the way, if you don't have a place to store your resources, check out headquarters, my Notion template. There's a link in the description. But page summary here is the most obvious and easiest one to understand. So let's have a look at custom outputs. Let's create a blog post. Now for this to be well written, we want to give it specific context. And luckily, if I scroll down, look at that. I have this thing here called blog rules. So if I click on this, AI wrote this for me, to be honest. These are just rules here that would make for a good blog post. Obviously, in here, you would add your rules and all the things that you think would make a good blog post or whatever you're creating. Here, what you'll do is pick the page. So I can see here blog rules comes up. So I'll click on that. Write a blog post about how to make one pot pasta. So I'll click here on done and then click on generate. And now what it's going to do is pick up the rules from this blog rules here and use that to create this text here. And it did a really, really good job. So here are the blog rules that it has to stick to. And it did a really good job, especially of like breaking it into chapters. So it's really easy to read. The only problem with this recipe post is that the first five paragraphs on some unnecessary tangent about going camping or something. So now that we understand how to generate page summaries, and I won't even show you how to do key points, you get the idea. It just creates a list basically. What I'll now do is show you how to create a context hub to pick up information for this here. So for this tutorial, I'll use headquarters, my premium notion template. There's a link in the description if you're interested. And what you'll do is add this somewhere that makes sense. So I'm going to add it to my workspaces here. So in here, we have a bunch of stuff, time tracking, move the needle, habit tracking, all of that stuff. In here, what I'll do is click on new page. And this here will be a new workspace. And I'll call this context hub. I'll click here to change the icon and do a robot. Click on that. And this page here, I'll open this up. And on this page here is where we can create this gallery. So I'll make a new empty database. And these here will be all of the different contexts that we can pick up from here when we say using. So when we do a specified context in this AI block here, then we can pick up from these pages here. In here, you could add a, you know, a meetings bot or a class quiz creator, for example. And this here could take your class notes, for example, and create them into mini quizzes so you can practice for a test. A meetings bot here, for example, can ignore all the ramblings of your coworker who doesn't respect your time. Drop in the comments what you think would be a good page to add to the context hub. So now we have this context hub here that we can draw from when creating these AI blocks. By the way, if you're interested in headquarters, there's a link in the description. Or if you want to see the full tour, then you can click on this video here. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful.